everyone and welcome to another um, tutorial from Lori Radis with 12 Paw Designs. This week we're going to do a resting witch face sign. And for this you are going to need, I picked up a sign from the Dollar Tree, it's one of the banner ones. Um, and then I'm going to use a scraper and some sandpaper to get the glitter off of it. And then you're going to need some white paint, some brown paint, a paintbrush, um, your choice of ribbon, some floral wire, wire to help tie it, um, glue to glue the bow on, and then I used a little detail brush because you're going to need it for the lines, um, some type of straight edge, it can be paper, ruler, whatever, and then your choice of vinyl, and then your favorite weeding tools. And then you're going to want to cut out the free design from the blog um, for Rusting Witch Face. I also forgot you are going to need some some type of floral, your little squeegee for putting your vinyl down, and then that should be it for this one. The first the first thing we want to do is we want to take the little scraper and we want to scrape off as much of the glitter as we can get off. And it took a little bit to sand it or to scrape it off. And then I'm just taking this is an 80 grit piece of um, a sanding block. And again, you can get it from the Dollar Tree. I got the scraper from the Dollar Tree too. And you're going to sand off all that extra vinyl that, or the glitter that you can get off. And then once that's done, I just took a piece of paint or painter's tape. And I taped off that little top edge because I'm going to paint it a little bit later. But it was just easier so that I didn't have to cover the white that I just covered it up. And then I'm going to take my white and just put it on there and then use my paintbrush to cover it up. It did take three coats of white to cover it just because of the, the image that was below it. So just keep that in mind. The other thing too when you're painting, if you get paint on the edges and you don't want paint on the edges because I didn't want to paint the back myself and the edges, just take a baby wipe when you're done and then just wipe those edges off and it'll help you so that you don't have to paint those edges or paint the back or anything else like that. So it's a really simple little trick to just take um, a baby wipe and just some something um, with, without alcohol in is usually what I use or whatever I can find on sale is what I grab. And, um, and then while it's drying, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our um, free file and we're just going to leave it and get everything that it did take three coats of paint to cover everything. And here you can see I'm just taking that baby wipe and wiping everything out. You even got a little bit of that in the So just a little trick for me. And like I said, while everything's drying, we're just going to go ahead and um, weed our vinyl. And I like to use weeding boxes if I can to make, it, um, make things easier to help weed and find where everything is at. And you're just gonna go through and take everything off. If there's a spot where you're actually weeding your vinyl, just take your scissors, and because it seems like it's overlapping on itself, just don't be afraid. Take your scissors, cut that extra vinyl, just to make sure that you don't have anything coming back on top of itself and sticking on you. And then just go ahead and remove all the little centers out of your letters. Um, on the little spider, there's a couple little extra pieces of plastic. I mean a vinyl spot so make sure you get those two or don't forget to weed that part as well and then we're just going to finish weeding everything up and here you can just see that I'm putting on my last coat of white paint so again like i said it took three coats to do this i skipped over um, recording one of them but i just want to let you know it did take a little bit because of that color underneath there then once this is dry so you're going to want to let it sit and dry a little bit before you do anything with it once it's dry though now we're going to add on the the faux shiplap type look because that's the look that i did on this one so what i'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you the, um, the steps that I did to do that. So you're going to take your board, you're going to take your brown paint, and you're going to take a little paintbrush and a straight edge. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay the straight edge down, 
I didn't have much on my lid, so I had to go in and pull it out of the bottle. What you're going to do is you're going to lay your straight edge down. I eyeballed mine, okay? And you're just going to draw a line with the paint across for it. And so you want a thin lined paintbrush. And so again, I was eyeballing, and then I realized that as I was doing it, my lines ended up being with the paper, so it made it a little easier to do the other one as well. So again, you just want to put the line on, um, on the side. that done I took the rag and you can use a foam brush a brush um, a makeup sponge anything like that to actually go in and do the edges of your sign so you want to give it that little bit of a distressed look so I just took the rag since I already had it and I rub out my lines to give that distressed look that I'm looking for and then I'm just going to put some paint on the edge of the um or on the, the, the rag and I'm just going along the edges and where those seams are that we painted on, I'm adding a little extra in there to give that more uh, faux distressed look of old antique boards and things like that. So I just went in and did that. And I go all the way around. And I go, um, once I did that, I also took off the tape off the top. And I used that same rag to kind of stay in the top. And if you did get any paint on the edges, you could actually do a stain type look to cover that as well. And all I'm doing here is just going through and filling that in. I actually went across the top line. And then I took a drier part of that um, of my rag too after I was done. And I just kind of rub that um, on those distressed, distressed areas just to give it, to make sure it was dry and blend it in a little bit better. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the look that I was looking for there. So just you know, go ahead and do it like I said, I just was rubbing it just to make sure everything's dry and just making sure that everything gets that nice little bit dry. Okay, now that everything is dry, let's go ahead and put our vinyl on the side. So I'm just taking my transfer tape, and this transfer tape is from Expressions Vinyl, and I'm just going ahead, and this is more of um it's more of a tape, like a masking tape, but it's um, transfer tape. And so it's not as quite as see-throughable, but I'm actually gonna take that and I'm taking my words and I'm just putting my transfer tape on and I'm gonna squeegee it off. I'm also gonna use parchment paper to help me layer it because of the word which go, um, is an offset. So I'm gonna use that as well. I also realized as I was going through this whole process that I found something in the file when I was doing it that wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be. And I made the broom and I didn't go in and resize it. So this is a little big for the sign. And I had to go in and adjust, instead of recutting everything, I had to go in and readjust um, the broom and I just cut the broom, um, broom out. And this is where I realized that I cut it too big. But again, I wasn't gonna get rid of everything and redo it because the words seemed fine to me. I just had to go in and just size the broom down but just as a word of caution I did fix the little um, thing that I wanted to tweak because I wanted a bigger spider for you guys so I'm just going in here and I'm going to put the resting witch down and because of the resizing that I had to do I had to move face down so just um, bear with me as I'm fixing some of the things that I had because again I didn't want to recut everything and waste all that vinyl when I did not have to so I'm laying it down and then I'm just going to cut face off and we're gonna lay everything down. And I'm just using the squeegee and my scissors to cut off that extra. And then once that's done, we're gonna lay the word witch down. And we'll rub that down really well. Peel off our transfer tape. And remember when peeling off the transfer tape, I like to come back on it just to make sure that my letters are laying down nice for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with witch. And I'm just going to pull it off the transfer tape and apply that. Uh, one of the things I, I, I try and reuse my transfer tape, but this particular, because of the way this transfer tape is, it's kind of more of a one-use and one use type transfer tape. So I actually had to get a new a fresh piece out because it didn't want to stick to the transfer tape. It still wanted to stick to my backing. So I had to change that out. And I'm just going to grab now my parchment paper, lay that down. And one thing I love about the parchment is I can line it up the way I want it to. And I hinge method it then. So I attach down the top of the tape, lift up, pull the parchment out, and then apply everything down. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to work on the broom and the face and get that applied.
And once we have that done, now we're going to attach the hat on. And again, like I said, I oversized my words because originally I was planning for the hat to go on the R. But because of, you know, like I said, I wasn't going to recut and waste my vinyl and things like that. And you can make do with it and you just roll with it. And that's the one thing I love about doing crafts and projects is that you just kind of, you know, you roll with it and make changes as you go and mix it. So I'm just going to put it over the G, like, it's, like the G's wearing it. So I'm laying down my hat that off and then I'm just going to add the brim on and um, the buckle. And because they were so small, I was able to use my tweezers and just pick up the, the band and lay it down in there. I did not need transfer tape at that point, so it took care of it and just removed it because it was right there. And so I'm picking that off and laying it down. Remember, you don't always need transfer tape depending on the size of the, um, the item on your phone. So, now that that's done, let's make a bow. Now, because this is a smaller side from the Dollar Tree, I'm making a smaller bow. This is about um, 17 inches of ribbon, and I'm putting three pieces of each. And I, you need your floral wire and your scissors, and so I'm just cutting three pieces. And what I'm going to do, and this is one way I like to think of it, I like to fold them over at least um, in thirds. So one third, two thirds of it make the loop, and one third hangs down. And then I just keep um, spinning and twisting to make those little um, bows there. And I went through and added one of each of the colors. And then you kind of arrange them like a, um, like a, think of it as a floral bouquet. And you just add your flowers in as you're going along. It's the same thing with your leaves and petals. And like I was going through and I didn't want two oranges, so I just adjusted that and moved them over a little bit. And then once that's done, I'm taking my floral wire and I'm just going to wrap that around to tie off the bow. So it, like I said, it looks like a bouquet at this point. And all you want to do then is you want to go through and you fluff, fluff it up. And you want to pull those tails up so that they're flat and you just loop your bows in and things like that. And if your wire is a little bit too long, you can cut that off. But you could also, the other thing is you don't have to use a wire tie or use wire. You could also use um, a zip tie. And then once that's done, you just want to trim the edges of your ribbon to give it some decoration. Some of them I did a dovetail on and others I just did an angle cut on. So it, I just thought it kind of looked kind of neat with a little bit of a mix in there. And then while that's while I'm doing that, my hot glue gun is heating up because I need to glue this to the top of my sign. So all you're going to do is once you have it where you want it, you're going to figure out um, what part of the sign you want. And that's what I did. And now I'm going to add just a couple of these... Um, berry type things from the Dollar Tree. I didn't want the flowers per se because of the, the witch sign, but I wanted something a little bit extra on the top. So I'm just cutting the berries off these and I'm just going to use the berries portion of it and I'm going to glue that onto the top of the sign. And then once I have those glued on, then I'm just going to go ahead and do my bow. And I'm just putting some hot glue right on the sign and I'm sticking those berries right into it. I'm also going to push up and putting it as close to the top as possible because of the size and things like that to go from there. And my glue gun had a little bit of a, a little glue accident, so it decided to have a little accident on my sign, which isn't a big deal because at least where it landed, I just glued down one of the tips of the ends of the bow and it totally covers it up and nobody would ever notice it. At first I thought it was gonna be like, oh, and I was trying to get it off. And then I realized where the bow was gonna go, it wasn't a big deal. So again, happy little accidents accident happened when we craft and you can see here as I'm holding I hot glued the bow on and as I'm holding it on, or holding it down I'm fixing the tails and I'm floofing it as I go just to make sure I have it where I want it to go and go from there so there is our resting witch face sign I hope you enjoyed it check out the blog for the step-by-step -step and to get your free file we'll check you the next time thanks everyone bye bye <music>